My name is uh, Tomás Böhm, but uh, this talk is a uh, joint work with uh, István Overy, István Navrasic, and Janos Kövesdi. We all work in the same team at uh, Ericsson. Uh, this talk will be about uh, challenges that performance testing poses, and I hope you will see that those are quite different challenges than what you see in testing functionalities. Um, I will also talk about how to different approaches to solve this challenge, uh, different ways to make a certain trade-off in performance testing. And finally, I will also talk a bit about uh, Ericsson's uh, load generator tool called TitanSim. But um, let me start with an illustrative example. I'm sure that uh, most of you have watched uh, the Olympic Games this summer. Uh, I did watch it too, but there were actually a lot of people who went there to Rio to watch the games live. According to some statistics I read, there were over one million people visiting Rio in this two-week uh, time period. And it's not hard to guess that they all brought their cell phones with them and used it quite heavily. It seems that they made uh, over 30 million calls uh, on the mobile network and they downloaded and uploaded more than 300 terabytes of data. This is really a, these are huge numbers. It's, a, um, it's an extreme challenge that the mobile network had to uh, handle. Uh, but it seems that the network supplied by Ericsson uh, was up to this challenge because the access rates were very high, about 99%. So this means that, for example, out of uh, 100 calls, there was only a single one that couldn't connect. Uh, and also the subjective experience of the people, uh, the user experience, as I would say, I guess, uh, was quite good, as most of the people rated it either excellent or good. Um, but why I brought you this example is that it nicely shows that if you have uh, a large system, for example, a telecom network, then you might have uh, very tough non-functional requirements against this system. So in this case, we've seen that there is a huge uh, capacity requirement. There is quite a strict uh, stability requirement. And in terms of robustness, it must also perform uh, very well. Uh, and this is where uh, performance testing comes into the picture, that you need to somehow verify in advance that your system, uh, in this case your telecom network, will be able to fulfill these requirements. So you need to run some targeted tests to see whether it can serve the, uh, the planned number of users, and whether it can be up and running uh, 24 by 7, and uh, whether it can nicely and gracefully handle failures uh, in the network. But how do you do performance testing? Of course, the naive approach is in this situation is to buy 100 cell phones and uh, ask a lot of people to use them, but this would be a bit cumbersome and costly. So instead, what you typically do is you use a load generator um, that can simulate this number of users and the traffic that they generate uh, towards the network. Uh, such a load generator can be either software, hardware, or a combination of software and hardware. But what is uh, typically common in whatever load generator you use, that it is expected to provide a much higher performance than the system that you actually test. Just think about if you're about to test whether your system can provide uh, a certain capacity level, but your load generator cannot generate such a big capacity, then there's no way to go. Uh, the other expectation is that it typically has less computational resources to use than the system that you test. So it seems that we have some uh, conflict in between these two expectations here. So what can you do? As typical in engineering, you need to make some sort of a compromise. Um, what you can do is you can simplify the uh, traffic that you generate, simplify the model of your users, uh, and thus gain some extra performance. But how you actually make this trade-off between high performance and detailed or detail level of the simulation depends on the actual tool. Uh, there are three typical approaches to make this 
trade off. And in the next slides, I will guide you through these three approaches. Uh, the first one is called packet generation, the second is traffic playback, and the third is uh, tools with internal logic. So let's see packet generation. In this case, um, you typically have a tool that is able to send out a lot of network packets in bulk. Um, it's actually the same packet, just some tiny things, let's say destination header and message ID is incremented by means of a counter. Um, it's typically using a message template and some variable fields that are following a value provided by counters. Uh, this approach can generate an enormous amount of load, um, especially because uh, uh, it can be implemented in hardware. Uh, so it's, it's very useful for, for measuring raw data throughput through a network that we typically call the transport layer of, of the network, the infrastructure under the telecom services. Uh, and you can, besides throughput, you can also test like load balancing features of uh, message transport, or you can test uh, uh, some routing features and so on. Um, what you cannot do is any kind of um, complex flows. So you have a single message here that you multiply a number of times, but there's no way to, to handle message sequences. If you want to do that, and you want to set up real phone calls uh, in, in your performance test, then traffic playback tools are a better choice. Uh, what, what is typically done here is that you take uh, a real equipment, in, for example, in a test lab, and you record uh, a message, a real message flow uh, between the equipment and the system that you test. And later during your test, you play this message sequence back, um, and you do it a lot of times so that you can generate a reasonable load. Uh, it's, uh, this, uh, this is very good if you want to generate full calls or even quite long uh, message flows uh, throughout the sequence, throughout uh, your network. Um, so the typical application is uh, for sunny day scenarios of complex traffic, like setting up a phone call, tearing down a phone call, uh, simulation of uh, web browsing of a user, and so on. What you cannot do with this approach is, um, uh, is the handling of alternatives, like what can you do if an unexpected message arrives from the network? You can do nothing here. You just drop that call, consider it unsuccessful, and move on to the next one. If you want this capability of handling error cases or alternate flows, um, then there is a third approach for you uh, to use some sort of internal logic or have an inbuilt algorithm uh, that uh, models the behavior of your subscribers. So in this tiny example, for example, after sending out a request and waiting for its response, um, the, the tester, the test engine can either uh, receive a positive response from the system under a test and handle it accordingly, or receive a negative response or no response at all. And you can have a different handling mechanism for each uh, situation. Uh, this approach can be applied to, to, to generate um, network traffic with some uh, alternate flows, and it is also suitable for robustness tests. But what we should note here is that uh, uh, this approach is the most, has the highest uh, computational uh, demand out of the three that we discussed so far. So you cannot generate such a high load uh, with, with complicated internal logic than you could do with packet generation or even with traffic playback. So to sum up what we've talked about so far, uh, there are three basic approaches to make uh, the trade-off between performance and complexity in performance testing. Um, one is packet generation, where you use um, hard-coded packets. The second is uh, traffic playback, where you are playing back a pre-recorded message flow, and the third is to use an elaborate uh, internal logic. Um, 
the key point here is as the complexity of the simulated traffic increases across these approaches, or it gets closer to what real users are doing, um, the performance is simultaneously decreasing. Uh, now, in the remaining part of, of my presentation, let me talk to you a bit about how this specific trade-off is made by TitanSim, Ericsson's internal uh, load generator tool, um, and also give you uh, some details about this tool. Uh, it is based on uh, the Titan automated uh, testing framework, um, and it is uh, developed in the Budapest R&D Center of Ericsson. You see this building on the right, this is where we all work and uh, develop Titan Sim and also Titan. It's uh, not always that nice. This photo was taken at researchers' night uh, last month, uh, where the building received some nice light painting. Now, uh, if you are more in interested in more details about Titan, I would encourage you to go downstairs after the talk and uh, visit the Ericsson booth where there's a nice Titan demo. Uh, but as I was talking about Titan Sim, you might have raised the question, why did we develop our own tool instead of using a commercial one? Um, we have three reasons for that. One is that um, this way uh, we can work quite closely together with product development. So test development and product development can go hand in hand. And this is very useful when working on new interfaces or new protocols. Um, because you can imagine that the kind of traffic or the kind of tests that we have to implement in Titan Sim typically does not exist in real networks yet. Um, it's hard to make such a cooperation with uh, external tools. The second point is that uh, our tool supports uh, quite a few different protocols and interfaces that covers a large part of the Ericsson product portfolio. So it is um, straightforward to extend it with new features and new functionalities. And the third point is basically the cost. Uh, being a software-only solution uh, that does not need any specific hardware or software, it runs on off-the-shelf PCs and on off-the-shelf Linux distributions, um, it can be deployed quite efficiently in test labs. So due to these three reasons, uh, it seems that uh, using Titan Sim for Ericsson's uh, performance testing purposes uh, is a good fit. Now, let me get back to this uh, table that we've discussed earlier and see where Titan Sim is in this landscape. Um, on the one hand, uh, Titan Sim is capable of uh, simulating the stateful behavior of the users. Um, by means of state machines, you can describe traffic that is as complex as you wish. Um, it can handle uh, branches and lots of other uh, complex features. But this would be quite costly in terms of the generated load. It would restrict the amount of load you can generate on a single computer. Uh, this is why we heavily build on a distributed architecture provided by Titan uh, that allows us to, to scale up the performance by using multiple computers. So instead of a single PC, you can employ, let's say, 10 PCs and run the load generator distributed over them. And the scaling is actually almost linear. So on 10 machines, you can achieve the performance that is about 10 times the performance you see with a single one. Um, and we have a specific kind of traffic uh, that is um, especially sensitive to performance. This is media. So just imagine in, in, in voice calls, this is the voice signal. Or in video calls, this is the video signal that is transmitted over the network. Um, in tests that use media, uh, it is of utmost importance to have high performance in generating the media packets. So therefore, for this specific case, we have a 
package generator built in to Titan Sim. It's a library called ML Sim Plus uh, that is bundled together and integrated into Titan Sim. And in in some settings, it can work with hard-coded packets and uh, use a packet multiplier algorithm to very quickly generate a series of very similar packets. So it seems that in this sense, uh, Titan Sim can combine the advantages of these three approaches, provide high performance while also being able to model complex traffic. And as a side note, if you are more interested, if you're interested in how we use the state machines to describe uh, network traffic, please visit our poster at uh, the UCAT conference. It will be presented by Gabor Neymat. Uh, but as, as for the future, um, we would like to keep this uh, balance between performance and complexity that we have today in Titan Sim, and we plan to uh, make this available in uh, cloud environments as some sort of a load generator service. Um, this is our vision for Titan Sim to make performance testing available as cloud testing in order to have better utilization of the hardware that is used for the test and for, for example, dynamically resize uh, test labs that are used with Titan Sim. Uh, I have to tell you, though, that we see some risks as well in this vision, um, especially in connection with virtualization that is inherent in uh, cloud environments. Um, first, many virtualization techniques employ some um, extra architecture layer, for example, a supervisor. That might mean a computing overhead that is something you want to avoid in uh, performance critical applications. The other thing is related to the kind of tests we run. We, we push all, all the traffic we generate through the network cards of the computer. Therefore, a virtualized network interface might mean a real performance bottleneck. But our initial investigations showed that uh, these risks can be handled, and the benefits are much larger than the cost of handling these risks. Um, and our vision is also reinforced by Ericsson's strategy to move all its development and testing activities into centralized uh, cloud environments. They are called GIGs, the Global ICT Centers. Uh, one of them is shown on the picture on the right. And our plan is to make Titan Sim available as a load testing service in such environments. Okay. Uh, to sum up briefly, um, I, I talked about basically three things in this talk. Um, one is that performance testing uh, brings you quite different challenges than functional testing. You need to simulate a vast amount of users while typically having less computing resources than the system that you test. To resolve this conflict, you need to make a trade-off between the complexity of the traffic you simulate and the performance you wish to achieve. We've seen three ways to make this trade-off, three very different approaches. And, uh, Titan Sim, Ericsson's internal load generator tool, is trying to combine uh, these three approaches uh, in some way. And in the future, it aims to become a cloud-based load generator service. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, you're more than welcome to ask. Yeah, so you may ask, but primarily through, the, through this online system. So the most uh, popular question is how can you make it sure that the bottleneck is in the system under test and not in the traffic generator tool or in the infrastructure that connects the two? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Yes, it's back on the screen now. Uh, this is the challenge we face um, almost every day. Uh, we need to work very hard on uh, measuring the performance of the load generator tool and trying to match it with the expectations uh, of our users who are performing the actual system test. Um, but you are right, you need to make sure that um, 
neither the infrastructure in the test lab nor the test tool is the bottleneck in testing because otherwise your capacity tests cannot be successful. So have you done any comparison between Titan Sim and some other tools, including Aeroflex Prinza? I guess you, you know these mm -hmm. tools. <laughs> yes, I know these tools. There are many um, other tools to make uh, load tests. There are also other tools to make uh, uh, performance tests in the same area that uh, Titan Sim works. Um, it's not very easy to make such comparisons. Uh, because we have a lot of detailed performance data about Titan Sim, uh, and we regularly repeat these measurements as well. These are available within Ericsson. Um, it is hard to find such measurements for the other tools, because, I mean, other tool vendors, they also do their measurements, but they, do, they use different methods, they use a different test lab, and it's not straightforward to compare these data. But what we can see um, from a bird's eye point of view um, is that tools that are comparable to Titan Sim, so that they also have internal logic to handle branching and complex traffic, um, and are also software-only tools that can run on generic software and hardware environments, we provide similar performance than our uh, commercial alternatives. Uh, of course, in control tests, we would be able to tell more details or have a more detailed analysis, but we don't have such data yet. Thank you, so I think we have uh, time for maybe two more questions, and after that, we have to continue in the break. So the, uh, the interesting one, is Titan Sim able to test in RF domain or only in digital? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, only in digital. So as it is software only, uh, we don't have a radio connected to Titan Sim, uh, but it would be an interesting, uh, uh, at least uh, interesting to think about how we could go on uh, uh, testing out of domain communication as well. We haven't dealt with that so far. It's restricted to digital transmission of uh, data packets. And also maybe this one interesting for the general audience, how difficult is to add new interface or model to Titan? Well, it depends. Um, there are cases when we can um, add new features or new interfaces to Titan Sim in a very short time, in, the, in a matter of days. Um, that is a really good result, I think, compared to the node side development activities that might need several weeks. Um, on the other hand, for more complex traffic, you definitely need more time. And if it, it also largely depends on what pieces of the puzzle we have ready. And this is where we have a big advantage, that in terms of the protocols that Ericsson uses, um, a large number of them is covered already by Titan Sim, so we can reuse uh, building blocks um, in creating new models.